Hi everyone, welcome to this GCC Higher Revision video. The 63 days are going to your first GCC maths paper, so keep up the hard work, you're doing fantastically well. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of parallel lines. So whenever you've got those straight line graphs, when are they parallel to each other? So in this video, we're going to go through what parallel lines are, we're going to go through some questions on it, I'm going to get you to try some yourself, so feel free to press pause and to try those questions. But let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at parallel lines. So we've looked at straight line graphs, graphs in the form y equals mx plus c. And if graphs look at the same gradient, they're going to be parallel to each other. So here's part of the Corp Miles revision card. And if you've got the graph of y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals 2x minus 3, those two lines will be parallel to each other because they've got the same steepness, the same gradient, they're going to be parallel. So two lines will be parallel to each other if they've got the same gradient. And that's an important factor to remember. So again, write on your windows if you need to, well, if your window pens, uh, you take the Corp Miles revision card and make sure you remember it and so on. Okay, let's have a look at our first question. So the first question says, circle the equation of the line that is parallel to y equals 8x subtract 2. So feel free to pause the video and think which of these three lines is parallel to y equals 8x subtract 2. Okay, so our choices are y equals 5x minus 2, y equals 8x plus 1, and y equals 4x minus 1. So for two lines to be parallel, they've got to have the same gradient. So the gradient of this line, m, would be equal to 8, because remember the equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. We're looking for the number in front of the x, so the gradient here of this line is 8, and the gradient of this line would also be 8. So if you circle this one, well done. These two lines will be parallel, they've got the same gradient. The gradient of this one is 5, and the gradient of this one is 4, so it's not the same as this one, which is 8. And this is our answer. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, write down the gradient of a line that is parallel to y equals 2x plus 3. So we're looking for the gradient of a line that's parallel to y equals 2x plus 3. So feel free to press pause and write down the gradient of any line that's parallel to y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, so the gradient of this line is 2 because it's y equals 2x, so the gradient of this line is 2. So the gradient of a line that's parallel to this would be 2 because it has to have the same gradient, so the answer would be 2. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, write down the equation of a line that is parallel to y equals 3x plus 1 and passes through the point 0, 7. So feel free to press pause now and find the equation of the line that's parallel to this line and passes through this point. Okay, so we're looking for an equation of a line, so it's going to be in the form y equals mx plus c, and we want to find its gradient and its y-intercept. That's parallel to this line, so that means it has to have the same gradient, so it's going to have to have a gradient of 3. So it's going to be y equals 3x plus c. Now we need to find c, the y-intercept, and that passes through the point 0, 7. Now normally I'd look at this point, and I'd look at its x-coordinate and its y-coordinate, and substitute those in and find the value for c, but this point's actually quite nice, it's actually on the y-axis, that is the y-intercept, the y-intercept is 7. So the answer would be y equals 3x x plus 7 and that's it. So that means the equation of the line that is parallel to y equals 3x plus 1 and passes through this point would be y equals 3x plus 7. It's got a gradient of 3, the same gradient, and passes through 7 on the y-axis, so plus 7 and that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So the question says, write down the equation of a line that's parallel to y equals minus 2x plus 7 and passes through the point 0, 5. So again, feel free to press pause now and to write down the equation of the line that's parallel to this line and passes through this point. Okay, again, this is quite a nice one because this is the y-intercept. That's 0, 5. It's 5 on the y-axis, so it's going to pass through 5. So the equation of the line is going to be the form y equals mx plus c. Its gradient would have to be minus 2 because it's parallel to this line, so it's going to be y equals minus 2x. And it crosses through 5 on the y-axis, so it's going to be plus 5, and that's it. So the equation of the line that's parallel to this line and passes through 0, 5 is y equals minus 2x plus 5, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says, write down the equation of a line that's parallel to y equals 4x plus 9 and passes through the point 3, 5. So this time, this point isn't on the y-axis, it's not the y-intercept, so we're going to have to work out where it crosses the y-axis. So feel free to press pause now and find the equation of the line that's parallel to this line and passes through this point. Okay, so it's going to be in the form y equals mx plus c, so y equals mx plus c. The gradient of the line that's parallel to is 4, so that means the gradient of this line will be 4, so it's going to be y equals 4x plus c. Now we need to find c where it crosses the y-axis. So we look at the point we've been given, we look at its x-coordinate, which is 3, and we look at its y-coordinate, which is 5, and we're going to substitute both of those into our equation to find our c. So let's do that. So y, well y is 5, so we're going to have 5 equals 4x, well x is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, so it's going to be 12 plus c. Now we want to find out what c is, so we don't want this plus 12, so we're going to subtract 12 and subtract 12, and 5 take away 12 is minus 7, so we're going to get minus 7 equals c. So that means that c is equal to minus 7, so we can now replace the c with minus 7, so the, that's going to give us y equals 4x minus 7, and that's it. So the equation of the straight line that's parallel to y equals 4x plus 9, 
and passes through the point 0.35 would be y equals 4x minus 7. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So this time we've been asked to write down the equation of a line that's parallel to y equals 3x minus 1 and passes through the point 4.15. So again, feel free to press pause and answer this question now. Okay, so we're looking for the equation of the line that's parallel to this line. So it's going to be y equals mx plus c. And we know it's going to have to have a gradient of 3 because it's parallel. So y equals 3x plus c. We want to find our c, so let's look at our point that it passes through, which is 4, 15. The x coordinate is 4 and the y coordinate is 15. So we're going to substitute those values into our equation. So instead of y, we're going to have 15 equals and 3 times x, 3 times 4 is going to be 12 plus c. We're then going to take away 12 from both sides, so take away 12 and take away 12. 15 take away 12 is 3, and that's equal to c, so c is equal to 3. So that means our equation would be y equals 3x, and instead of plus c, it's going to be plus 3. So that's it. So the equation of the line that's parallel to this line and passes through the point 4, 15 would be y equals 3x plus 3. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time this question is a little bit different than the ones we've looked at so far. We're told the line L1 passes through the points negative 6, 1 and negative 2, negative 1. And the line L2 passes through the point 5, 7 and is parallel to L1. Find the equation of the line L2. So feel free to press pause now and find the equation of the line L2. So in terms of the equation of the line L2, it's going to be in the form y equals mx plus c. And we want to find its gradient and we want to find its y-intercept. Now let's start off by looking at its gradient. So we know it's parallel to the line L1 and we've been given two points on the line L1. So we need to find the gradient of the line that passes through these points. So let's sketch the line L1 to begin with. So let's draw our x-axis and our y-axis. And the point negative 6, 1, well negative 6, 1 will be over there somewhere. And negative 2, negative 1, well negative 2, negative 1 will be down there somewhere. So we've got the point negative 6, 1 and we've got the point negative 2, negative 1. So we've got these two points and there's a line that passes through them. And we want to find the gradient of that line because we know that the line L2 is parallel to this line. So that means if we can find the gradient of this line, that's the same as the gradient of the line L2. So we're going to do a little triangle, a little right angle triangle. So we're going to go across and down. We're going to have a negative gradient here because the line's going downwards. So it's going to have a negative gradient. Remember the gradient M is equal to rise divided by run. So if we can work out the rise and the run of this line, then we can work out its gradient. So in terms of these two points, we'll go from negative six to negative two. So we're going to cross four. Its run will be four. We're going to cross four from negative six to negative two. In terms of the rise, well, it's going down. So it's going to be negative. And then we'll go from a height of one down to negative one. So it's going to rise of negative 2 it's going down 2. So the gradient of this line will be its rise which is negative 2 divided by 4 and negative 2 divided by 4 will be minus a half. So the gradient of this line is minus a half. So that means that if the gradient of the line L1 is negative a half the gradient of the line L2 would be negative a half. So it's going to be y equals minus a half x plus c. Now we need to find our c where it crosses the y-axis. Now we know a point that passes through it passes through the point 5 7. So we're going to substitute in the x coordinate and the y coordinate of this point into our equation to find our c. So x is 5 and y is equal to 7. So let's substitute those in. So y equals, well, it's going to be 7 equals minus a half times x. Well, minus a half times 5 would be minus 2.5 or minus 5 over 2. So you can write it either way, minus 2.5 or minus 5 over 2. It's up to you plus c. So we've done minus a half times 5, which is minus 5 over 2, or minus 2.5, and then we've got our plus c. Now we want to find out what c is, so we don't want this minus 2.5 here. So we're going to add 2.5, and we're going to add 2.5, and that will give us on the left-hand side, 7 plus 2.5 would be 9.5. And on the right-hand side, we would just be left with our c, because we're adding 2.5 to get rid of the minus 2.5. So we now know our c, which is 9.5, or 19 over 2, because remember, 9.5 would be the same as 19 over 2 as the top every fraction. Half of 19 is 9.5. So we can write it as y equals minus a half x plus 19 over 2 if you wanted to do it that way. Or you could write it as y equals minus 0.5x plus 9.5 if you were to work in decimals and so on. So that's the equation of the line. y equals minus a half x plus 19 over 2 or y equals minus 0.5x plus 9.5 depending on which form you're given it in. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So this time we've been asked to show that the lines of equations y equals 4x minus 1 and the line 3y minus 12y plus 1 equals 0 are parallel. So we've been asked to show that these two lines are parallel. So feel free to press pause now and show these two lines are parallel to each other. Okay, so in terms of this line, well, the gradient of this line is going to be 4 because it's y equals mx plus c, and the gradient would be 4. So m is equal to 4 for that line. Now, in terms of this line, it's not in the form y equals mx plus c. So let's rearrange it. So we've got 3y minus 12x plus 1 equals 0. And if we make y the subject, then we can find the gradient 
quickly and easily. So let's make y the subject. So I'm going to add 12x to both sides. So I'm going to add 12x to the left hand side and add 12x to the right hand side. On the left hand side, we're adding 12x to get rid of the minus 12x. So we're just going to be left with 3y plus 1 on this side because we're getting rid of that minus 12x. On the right hand side, we're going to have 12x. Now, we don't want this plus 1 here, so we're going to take away 1 and take away 1. So we're going to get 3y equals 12x minus 1. Now, finally, we don't want this 3 in front of the y. We don't want to multiply by 3. We just want y equals. So we're going to divide by 3 and divide by 3. So it means we're going to divide everything on the left-hand side by 3. That's y. And on the right-hand side, we're dividing everything by 3. So 12x divided by 3 would be 4x. And then in terms of our minus 1, we're going to divide that by 3. So it's going to be minus a third. So that means that the equation of this line is y equals 4x minus a third. Now, the gradient of this line would be equal to 4, because you can see the gradient here is 4, so the gradient there is equal to 4. So we've got the gradient of this line is equal to 4, the gradient of this line is equal to 4, so therefore they're parallel, so let's write that. Okay, I've just written down, and probably not the tidiest of handwriting, but it says the gradients of both lines are equal, 4, therefore they're parallel, and that's it. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at those parallel lines, those linear graphs that are parallel to each other. And we find out that when they're parallel, they've got the same gradient, the same value for m, whenever they're in the form y equals mx plus c. So parallel lines have got the same gradient. If you've got the code mass revision card, the card and parallel lines we use for you as well. And that just reminds you that the gradients, whenever they're the same, that they're parallel lines. Uh, today, I've put a link in the description below for the practice questions. I highly recommend those because parallel lines is different types of questions you can get. From the most simple ones, whenever they're all in the form y equals mx plus c and just identifying the ones that are parallel to each other, to more complicated ones. Whenever you know that it's parallel to another line, you perhaps need to work out the gradient of that line. You then know a point that your line passes through and you've got to then find the value for c and so on. So I'd highly recommend the practice questions today and there's a link to them in the description below. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at perpendicular lines. So that's whenever lines cross each other at 90 degrees. So we're going to be looking at that tomorrow and hopefully whenever we go through these two topics, it'll mean that you're much more confident whenever you're dealing with those coordinate geometry questions towards the end of the GCSE papers, those more complicated parallel and perpendicular line questions. So hopefully these two videos will really boost your confidence for those. So keep up the hard work. I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock for 62 days of going to GCSE Miles exam. Cheers. Bye.